Hello guys, welcome back to SWS Boxing. Delighted to be joined with Stephen Bendel, boxing promoter, head of his show tomorrow night in at the O2 Academy in Bournemouth. And um, yes, how are you, mate? All good, thank you, mate. All good. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about the show. Of course, first fight, you've got Wesley uh, Shawaya. Is that how you say his name? Wesley Shawaya, yes, that's it. Yeah, and he boxed in Michael Mooney over four rounds. That's correct. Good little, good little start for Wes. It's his debut. You know, he um, he's trained by Craig Kev Thornley, managed by managed by myself. Wes actually, Wes actually works for me in my gym, so we, we're getting him started. You know, Michael Michael Mooney's a tough a tough cookie. So he's got his work to do, but hopefully it'll be a nice little start for him. Yeah, and Michael Mooney um, is tough as they come, isn't he? Definitely, yeah, definitely. It's great, it's a great, hopefully a great learning fight for Wes, but he, he's got to turn up because if we don't, Michael Mooney will, will, will put, him, put him to the rim, you know? Yeah, because recently Michael Mooney um, has been putting a good, uh, like, I mean, giving these prospects a, I mean, he does give them a good test, but recently he's making them close. Well, that, and, and, Mike, Michael's a great learning. You know, when, when you're bringing people like Wesley through, the, the rank when they start off, you know, where's the other short amateur career? You have to kind of try and build their experience. If that makes sense, you know, he's looking great in the gym, looking great in the But it's one thing doing it in the gym, it's another thing doing it in the ring. So you have to get the kind of right fights for them to build their experience, see how they're developing. And then when they start boxing, how you want them to box, and you can take them little steps up. It's similar to how we did with Lee Cutler, you know. Mm. Cutler's Cutler's now English champion, you know, so. Is that a super lightweight fight, um, That fight, the first fight? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the second fight, uh, you've got Ray and Mason v MJ Hall, again, a four-rounder. Yeah, Ray, Rayner's second pro fight, you know, he had a couple of amateurs before going pro after being out of the ring for, for a while, but um, he's been training with me, with me now two years. And then he looked good in his first fight, but he and he, he wasn't on the show in December because he had a family holiday with his got two young children. So, um, so now he's he's on his, his second his second um, outing as a pro. Mm -hmm. And another uh, one of the toughest men on the scene again, uh, MJ Hall as well. Well, again, I see you bring in these boxers, these well schooled, um, working boxers. To try and teach these boys, as I say to all my boys, if you don't show up, these boys will be here. You got, you got to be on form. You can't underestimate these kids because these kids, they're they're in, they're in the ring week in week out, and if you, if you don't show up, they they know how to be here. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and then third fight, you've got Matt King v Lee Hallett, who Lee Hallett's coming off a win in his last fight. Yeah, you know, obviously, obviously Matt King's with them um, with Michael Bangle, managed by Michael. Obviously, me and Michael work together. So, um, Matt's back in Bournemouth. It's the third time he's fought in Bournemouth now. So, I would say another tough, another tough learning fight. Yeah, I mean, he's he's had though. He challenged for, of course, the Southern area uh, last year. Of course, didn't go his way. Then he fought. Uh, I think it was Ben Vargan, and that was a very competitive fight. Um, I know you're not. Uh, he's you guys won't be looking past Lee, but. Sure, would you be looking for titles this year for Matt? Well, well, I would think Michael was trying to get him back into title contention. One hundred percent, you know, it's all about building them back up. But when you've been there and 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 kind of doing well at it, you want to go again, you know, and try and do better next time, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, then you've got four fight of the night. You've got Thomas for Lizzy v Harry Matthews. Thomas Fouts. Sorry, yeah. not good with mm -hmm. names. Another one, yeah, it's no problem. Another one, another one of my boys, Thomas. You know, again, two working boxers, really. Thomas and, and Harry's a very good old school, typical working boxer, you know. And yeah, you know, but it's a difficult weight for Thomas. And there's not that many fighters over here to, to match him with, so we've got to, we've got to take a chance. But Thomas has been looking great in the gym. He lost his last fight to Tom Cowlin, but gave Tom a very hard fight. Lost on points, so he's looking good. He's looking good in his performances. Hopefully we can we can do enough tomorrow to work to get to get the result. Yeah, is he is he a sort of um fighter who who is willing to go in the away corner as well as fighting the home yeah, corner? Yeah, Thomas just wants to fight. 
You know, he just wants to fight. You know, and to be fair, the two the two away fights he had, which he's been which he lost, they were both close fights. You know, and you know, you know so he turns up to give it his best, and you know, and hope well, we go there for the win, but we'll come out if we if we get beat, we'll we'll, we'll come out putting up a good fight. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. So he 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 lost Tom, and who was the other one? He lost to um, to a Welsh kid. Um, oh. Former Commonwealth Games representative for Wales, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was a tall, tall lad, nice box, had a, a cracking little fight on a, on a on a show in Wales, on a Chris Sane show. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he go gets his second win tomorrow then. Hopefully, yes, hopefully. Uh, and then yeah, you've got an auction after that. Um, fifth fight, uh, Jake Clark v Christian Lopez Flores, six rounds. Yo, Jake. Is only the second um, diabetic boxer in the country. So Jake's only loss was down to his diabetes. It wasn't down to to be, being beat in the ring. He, he um, it was, I think it was his second fight. And on the, when you're a diabetes boxer, you have to you have to have a monitor fitted to your leg. And and that after every round, they they monitor your sugar levels to see how it is. And if it goes if it goes over a certain amount, they'll stop the fight. And that's what happened. And you know so. Obviously, Jake's a diabetic. He understands his diabetes, but doesn't understand the disc in his leg. So we're working on things, and we're learning all the time. We've now realised that if we put Jake on later, his body's sugars settle down more. So it's just it just it's, it's all learning. You know, and I say, unfortunately, with Jake, he lost that fight, but he wasn't losing. He, was, he he got stopped after the first round, and he was winning the fight hands down. But unfortunately. Everyone's learning with diabetes. The board of control are learning. The doctors are learning. You know, and Dr. Will Cox, who works my shows a lot of time, is now has worked closely with Jake. They're starting to understand it more now, if that makes sense. Mm. Is it his first six rounder? No, it's his second. His, his last four was a six rounder. Mm. But yeah, he's got another good uh, opponent in Christian Lopez Flores. Yeah, but it's the Jake. With Jake, Jake is a very good boxer. You know, Jake fought for England as an amateur. Um, I think he got beat in the ABA finals. He's got a great pedigree, but but, but up, up until up until this day, I think I think the only other uh, diabetes boxer is, is a guy called a kid called Muhammad Ali. Believe it or not, he's the only other diabetic boxer in this country. So you could up, up to that up to that stage, if you were a diabetic, you couldn't go professional. So everyone's learning about it and, and trying to understand it more and more. And hopefully, Jake has got the ability to go a hell of a long way. You know, and we'll just so he's, that... he's made history as well, uh, as well. Well, we have, well, if that's how you want to say, only only to be the second boxer in the country with, as a diabetic, it's some kind of history, isn't it? So, mm. but yeah, and then you've got your main event. You've got Mace Ruegg v Stu Greener um, over six rounds. Oh, well, Mace, you know, Mace is now he's now come to me and he's been trained by myself. Uh, and then we've been working for the last six six weeks, you know, making adjustments. I mean, as a boxer, Mace, in my eyes, is a different level. But he's, but for me, he's been too much of a showman when he's fighting. He's been too too busy looking good instead of sitting down and doing the business when he at the times where he chooses to do. So when he so, fought Dean Dodge, sort of. Yeah, 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 he wasn't with me then, but obviously, we, we, but he's too much of a, he's too much of a, of a showman. If you if you look at what I've been trying to say to him, if you look at Ben Whittaker, Ben Whittaker's a showman, but then when he wants to go to work, he sits down, he lets them shots go, and we've I've been trying to do the same thing with Wes because Wes has got a very similar style to Ben. Obviously, Ben's a lot further ahead from, from, from the amateur experience he had, but just little things we've been working, hopefully he's going to make a big difference. I, I think Mace is a different level, personally. So I've been with him now six, six, seven weeks, and the changes we've made, I'm hoping because you're going to look good on Saturday. Mm, and, and of course, and we um, chose, chose, sorry, we chose Stu Greener for a reason. Because Stu Greener, Stu Greener comes to fight. I've just, I haven't long just left, left, left the day before weighing with the two lovely kids, Stu, and you know it's going to be a cracking fight. Yeah, because Stu as well recently uh, is picking up these results, and he always comes for a good, uh, good tear up. Yeah, definitely. And where's being ten and oh, sorry, Mace nice. being ten and oh, Mace being ten and oh, is at the stage now where we we need to start making them steps. Now I, I've said to him, I want all being well that we get the victories, 
two more fights. I, I want to find for some kind of tile, whether, whether it be an intercontinental tile, whether, whether it be a Southern Air tile, whether it be a, um, an English tile, whatever I can get from him, because he's he's at that stage with the experience he's had in the on, in license scene. He, he's, had, he's had like so much 200 fights. So even though he's only had 10 amateur fights, he's got any, a lot of experience under his bow. You know, he's, he's ready to be let off the leash a little bit, you know? Mm, yeah, so that that's um it for for your show tomorrow. But uh before before I let you go, just touch on a Gemma Ruegs Commonwealth title fight, which is uh is it next week or the week after? The twentieth of April, yeah, two weeks. Sorry, yeah, talk about that fight. Well, yeah, it's an amazing opportunity for Gemma. You, you look at Gemma's records. You know she lost more than which is win, which is for everybody, every up and coming prospect she has fought, and she gave them. Tough fights, and she's even beat a couple. You know, in the two or three she, fights, them defeats weren't defeats in my eyes. She should have won them. Mm. She went to she went to France in in her last fight against them. Um, maybe yeah, Gang. Yeah, I had a winning winning seven out of the eight rounds, but they they, they never gave it that way. So this is a, an amazing opportunity for Vijema, and we're hoping to take it with both hands. I think she's got the ability to win the fight. Obviously, we we've just got to do it. Do it on the night. It would be a great achievement for Gemma to win that title. She deserves it. Yeah, and because she's got uh, Nicola Hopewell, who who did, I think she fought for it, but she lost to Emma Dolan. Did you watch that fight? I, I haven't seen it. I've got. I'm going to sit sit that back. Obviously, I've watched certain fights of her, but we're going to sit down this week and study everything because we've been working on things in the gym. Obviously, with the shows now, now I've got a bit of time. I can sit down and work on things and. Look at things. Mm. And um, yeah, before I let you go, how many shows are you trying to have um this year, roughly? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll be doing four in Bournemouth. I think I've got five. Got one in, in Aldershot, Aldershot, haven't you? Yeah, I've got. I think we're doing five in Aldershot. Working with John Edwards, myself and John Edwards are working together on solo shows in Aldershot. I'm working with Gary White in um, Southampton. So I'm looking at doing uh, be 12, 13 shows maybe this year. Just getting busy. Obviously, there's, there's only only so many shows you can do in one town. You got luckily now now make it working with new people, getting new contacts. It's, it's I'm, 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 a, I'm an easy guy to work with. So and luckily these these boys I'm working with are nice nice good lads, gendering people. So hopefully we can just keep building now. Mm. And from me, mate, thank you for your time and good luck with the show tomorrow night. Thank, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Thank you. Speak soon, mate. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.